Hello, my name is Chris Kiak with Kiak Technology Solutions. In this video today, I'm going to talk a little bit about making my own Tecla PowerFab export from Tecla Structures. And let me show you why I would want to do something like that. Well, the default PowerFab export is up here under the Tecla menu, and then you go to Export, and there's Tecla PowerFab. When you go to that, this allows you to control what data that you want to be exported. Now, however, the issue is, is that this PFXT export or zip file export, or sometimes commonly called it the XML export, it is typically based off of there being drawings already created in the document manager. So this export is usually more for, for approval packages or for fabrication packages, not for ABM packages like I'm doing now. So at early stages of the project, I'm just doing a stick built version of my model with no connections on it. And I want to do an export for advanced build purposes. Now, the thing is, is that this is designed to be based off of drawings being in the document manager or the drawing list of Tecla. Now, there is a neat little workaround where you can say all, and it will export all of the parts in the model, but you'll get stuff that you may not want. And so there is not really a selection from the model option. Even though it says selected from model here, if I selected this and exported right now, if there's no drawings in the document manager, then uh, the export's actually gonna complain and say missing drawings. And so you unfortunately cannot do a true from selection and model if drawings are not made for those items selected in the model. So that's what's driven me to wanna to make my own export. And I also want to make sure that the export does not uh, output any kind of line items or parts that have gotten shorter uh, for a revised ABM. So there's a very specific workflow that I'm driving towards here. But even if you wanted to kind of customize your own export and black box the export and not have to worry about this and deal with all of customizing these like uh, reports here to control how things are exported. Um, I don't know, like whether you don't want field bolts to go across or if there's certain things that you want to specifically be overridden based on some UDAs rather than messing around with these reports here, you could write your own export. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So the first thing I would do, though, is I'm going to export uh, just just maybe this whole job, just so I can get an example. So I'll say all export to Tecla PowerFab, and then it makes that file. And there we go. Now, a lot of people don't know that the PFXT file, it's actually just a new extension for a zip file. So if you just change the extension to .zip, you can right click and say extract all. That'll unzip that here into that folder. And there we go. There's the XML file that I'm talking about. And that's what we're gonna programmatically create. Now, if I go inside of that, you can see here that this is very similar. See, this is one I programmatically wrote, right? Very similar data. And this is the one automatically out of Tecla Structures. It's the same exact thing, just a little bit slightly different data, but uh, the format and the schema is all exactly the same. So how did I accomplish this? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go to the Tecla discussion forums and that's gonna show you where I got the XML schema definition for that export. So if you go to the Tecla discussion forums online, underneath Tecla PowerFab forums at the bottom, there is a developer forum. So I'll go inside of there. And uh, inside of here, uh, somebody actually posed the question, are there any published XML specifications for the FabSuite data exchange, which that is the export from Tecla structures to PowerFab. So I'm gonna actually click on this and I just happened to come across this. And sure enough, Chris Randolph from Trimble actually posted the XML schema definition file. And this is awesome. This is the key. This is the holy grail. This is what's going to make it very fast and simple for you to get exactly the schema that you need. So if you're a Tecla Structures API developer, you can now create C Sharp classes automatically from this XML schema definition file and boom, just start writing your own customized export. Now you still got to know what you're doing, like as far as working with those C Sharp classes, but you have a lot of time saved rather than dealing with the XML directly. So I'm going to click on this. That'll download this sucker. And then uh, you can actually see that I've already downloaded it before, but I'll just right click and say extract all. And then inside that zip file, there is the XSD or XML schema definition file. And this is what I need. I'm gonna actually automatically generate C-sharp classes in Visual Studio based on this XSD file. So I'm just gonna cut this. And you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go to a, like a, a simpler folder because I'm gonna have to change the directory for this. So I'm just gonna go to a little folder that I created called C-sharp. And you can see I've actually already done this before just as a practice, but let me delete these out and I'll just paste that XSD file in there. And then what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna actually need to remember this file name. So I'm gonna copy that file name, I'm gonna remember this directory, and I'm gonna automatically generate the C-sharp classes. All right. 
Okay, so now back here in Visual Studio, I'm gonna to go to Tools, and then I'm gonna to go to the Visual Studio Command Prompt. And if you do not already have this linked, you'll just go to External Tools. You'll press the Add button here, and you can just call this Command Prompt, for instance. And uh, then if you go ahead and go to the Browse button here, uh, you'll go to your C drive, and then you should have uh, Program Files, and then a Microsoft Visual Studio. I'm using 2022 in the Community Edition. Then there's this common seven folder and tools. And there is this uh, launch dev command, um, you know, for the command prompt. Uh, and there's a few different ones. So I'm not sure exactly which one I should be using. I think I used this one here. So I'm going to give this a shot. Um, but maybe look this up online and it'll tell you which one to use. I think I used this one here and I was just fine. Let me actually compare that. Uh, let me just take a look at what I did. Yeah. So launch dev command dot bat and it worked just fine. So that's exactly the one that I used here. Now I'm gonna uh, delete this out because I don't need that. I've already got that here, but I'll just say apply and okay. And then now I can go to tools. I'll go to my Visual Studio command prompt. And there we go. It brings up the command prompt. Now I need to change directory. So I'm gonna do CD. Now we're rocking old school here. And I'm gonna say C sharp. And that should change the directory. Oop, no spaces in there, sorry. So CD, C, C sharp. No spaces on my folder name. There we go, cool. So now, now that I've changed the directory, I can tell the Visual Studio command prompt uh, to use the XSD command and then slash classes and then spacebar after that and I will paste in the XSD file name. Now, that's it. Three quick uh, you know, things here to add in that line and hit enter and voila. You should get a C Sharp class now automatically creating that folder in that same directory. And let me just go find that real quick. There we go, got to the right folder. So here is the .cs file or C-sharp file, and I'll just copy that, right? And then if I come up here and right click in my Visual Studio project and say open file in Folder Explorer, I can just go ahead and paste that in here, okay? So I can take that and then once that's in there, now I renamed mine to Tecla PowerFab Data Exchange so I knew what this was and I added a namespace and all sorts of stuff in here, so I tweaked it a little bit. But if you just took this raw file here, it's as simple as how do I actually start taking use of that? Can right click and you can say add existing item and then you just browse to that c-sharp file and you'll have access to all those classes now let me just show you what i did i did things you know almost exactly the same except for i just added a namespace opening and closing declaration so that way i can contain all these classes and all these names and stuff like that inside of this namespace and segregate that more easily in my code and then just when i actually wrote my exporter then I've just got something in here that basically actually calls it at the very top. So there's that namespace. Now, I'm not gonna go through this all one by one because I assume that you know how to use C Sharp and uh, classes and collections and things like that. But what I did is I actually just took an export that I, uh, you know, like one of the XMLs out of Tecla and I just looked at what the mandatory minimum data is in there without drawing records and things like that just to do an import of the bill material for production control. And I just started looking at the XML export from Tecla. And then what I did is in my code, in the exporter, I just started instantiating the uh, the correct objects here in C-sharp and matching the correct output to what Tecla structures did. And then here you go. You can just see that I'm starting to go through, instantiate and set all those things up with C-sharp objects. And then at the very end, I'm just using the normal .NET XML serializer. And I'm just taking the, X, uh, the C-sharp classes converting them to XML and writing that data directly to file. And that's the only thing I'm doing with the XML. Everything is like a C-sharp .NET API of that whole uh, PowerFab export from Tecla Structures. And so if you're a Tecla Structures API developer, you just start scanning through all the assemblies and parts and drawings and things like that in the model. And you write your own custom version of this using C-sharp classes and then just use XML serialization and save it to file and you're good to go. So let me show you in practice what I'm talking about. So I've got this uh, tool that takes like a CSV file that's exported from Tecla Structures of ABM part information. And I can actually compare an older version of that report with the new version of the report and it tells me about changes. Now, if things got shorter, I don't really care about those changes. In fact, I want to ignore those. I don't want those, uh, those shorter pieces in the new parts uh, report file to actually be reported as a change over in PowerFab. So what I do is I do this comparison and you can see the re resultant list. So now what this tool does is it takes a combination of the original parts and the new parts, depending on if anything has changed. Uh, if nothing is uh, changed other than gotten shorter, it'll use the original length from the original parts 
and I'm just going to save this information as what? A Tecla PowerFab XML using those new classes that I just generated. So I'll just say test XML here and replace that. And then I can close this tool down. And then if I come over here, look at this. So I'll just open this up and there you go. That's exactly what I just generated there, which matches and looks exactly like an XML file that would come out of Tecla structures for that PowerFab export. So there you go. This shows you how you can now take that schema definition file on the Tecla discussion forums and you can automatically create your own C Sharp API of that export. And now you can black box and control your own destiny for exporting to Tecla PowerFab. Again, my name is Chris Kiek with Kiek Technology Solutions, and I'm a Tecla Structures developer as well as familiar with working with the Tecla PowerFab API. If you have any need as a fabricator or detailer in working with the exports or getting a customized export to meet your fabricator specific needs, feel free to reach out and we can help you out.